Greetings, physics enthusiasts. Welcome to AP Physics 1, Unit 6, Lesson 8. This is our final lesson in this unit. And we've been talking a lot about simple harmonic motion. And so an oscillator is something that goes back and forth. And a simple harmonic oscillator is, is an oscillator whose motion is simple harmonic. Okay, what does that mean? The example that we've been giving over and over and over again of a simple harmonic oscillator is a block attached to a spring. The block will bounce back and forth. The block is the oscillator. The block's motion is the motion. So I wouldn't say the block is simple harmonic motion. I'd say the block has simple harmonic motion, or the block demonstrates simple harmonic motion, but the block itself is an oscillator. And this spring has a constant K, and the block will move from the center, which we call equilibrium, and it'll move to the right of equilibrium, and then it'll move the same distance to the left, and then to the right, and then to the left. And we call that distance that we move from equilibrium A the amplitude. So this motion that is caused by a spring, that is caused by a restoring force, is simple harmonic motion. And there's two things about a restoring force that we've said are important. One is that the direction of the force is back toward equilibrium, back toward equilibrium. So if the block is displaced to the right of equilibrium, the spring pushes it left back to equilibrium. If the block is displaced to the left of equilibrium or to the left of equilibrium, the spring pushes it back to the right. Not only that, is the direction always back toward the center or back toward equilibrium, but the size of the force varies. The farther we get from equilibrium, the harder the spring pushes. The farther we get the other direction, the harder the spring pushes. And it is a direct proportion. If I go twice as far, the spring pushes twice as hard. If I go one third as far, the spring only pushes one third as hard. So that is what we mean when we say a restoring force. Not just that the direction is back toward the center, but the direction varies in a direct proportion with how far we are from the center. All right, and that's simple harmonic motion. And one way of describing that in terms of an equation is to look at the energy. The energy is kinetic, one half mv squared, and the energy is potential, not gravitational up and down potential, but potential stored in the spring. So at any location along here, I could talk about the speed V. The speed could be zero, faster, 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 fastest, slower, 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 zero. The speed is different numbers at all these different locations. And of course, X is the location. So X is zero, X is bigger positive numbers, smaller positive numbers, zero, bigger negative numbers, smaller negative numbers, zero. And of course the size of uh, X and V matters, the sign or the direction in this equation does not matter because positive or negative V doesn't matter, it gets squared. Positive or negative X doesn't matter, it gets squared. So this is the total energy of the system. Some of it is kinetic, some of it is potential stored in the spring. Now there are two special locations. There's all the way out at the end when the speed is zero. So one half mv squared is just zero. And that's when we're all the way out at the end. So instead of x being squared, I'm gonna write the biggest value possible for x, which is a. The other special location is here in the center where x is zero. And that's where I'm going the fastest, one half m v max squared. I could have written x max, but I wrote a. 
So the energy can be some kinetic, some potential. It can be all potential energy out at the end. And it can be all kinetic in the center. Now, I'm just going to not look at this part right now. This is true, but I'm not going to look at it. I'm going to look at this equation. And I'm going to solve it for V. So if I want to solve this equation for V, I'm going to get rid of the one halves, multiply both sides by two. And then I'm going to divide both sides by M. And I'm going to move this over to the right. So I've got V squared. I divided by M, so the M went away. I've got KA squared minus KX squared. This moved to the right and became negative. And then I'm going to divide by M. Are you okay with that algebra? And then I'm going to take the square root of both sides. V equals plus or minus. I hope you remember when I take the square root of both sides, I have to write plus or minus. Refer to a math class for that. The square root of 16 is plus or minus 4. So that's why the plus or minus. Root k over m times a squared minus x squared. Do you see there's a k over m there and a k over m there? So I factored that out. So v, the speed, is plus or minus root k over m times the square root of a squared minus x squared. So the velocity, this is velocity as a function of position. When x is 0, I get the velocity is the square root of k over m times a. That looks like that. In fact, all of these look like that. So the velocity as a function of position. Notice that this velocity is a constant times this square root, a squared minus x squared. So if something is a simple harmonic oscillator, its velocity will be this constant because k doesn't change, and the mass of the block does not change. And then a has to do with how far I pull it, and then at different positions, I have different velocities. Now, one of the things I said a few times this chapter, and I did not prove it to you, I'm about to, but one of the things I said was that a spring moving back and forth is like circular motion. So here's a circle. If I have a little block or ball or something going around in a circle in uniform circular motion, uniform circular motion. The word uniform matters. It means we're not speeding up and we're not slowing down. I said that the horizontal part of that motion, if I had a flashlight up here shining down on the ball and I projected that shadow on this screen here, the shadow going back and forth would move back and forth in simple harmonic motion. I told you that was true, but I didn't prove it. Let's see if we can prove that now, shall we? So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to look at, you know, this special easy place to talk about. I'm going to look at some general place. So when I'm here, I'm going to call this velocity. I'm going to look at what uh, letter I used. I'm going to call this V naught. And when the ball's here, its speed is still V naught because the circular motion is uniform. It doesn't speed up. It doesn't slow down. Omega is constant. So V naught does not change size. Omega is constant. Alpha, the angular acceleration, is zero. All of those are different ways of saying uniform circular motion. The speed doesn't change. The angular speed doesn't change. The angular acceleration is zero. All of those are what I mean when I say uniform circular motion. 
Now, underneath this ball is the shadow of the ball. I wonder what the speed of the shadow is here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to develop some kind of expression, some kind of equation for this velocity. And I want, I'm hoping in my heart, that the velocity will look like this. It'll have some constant in the front. And then wouldn't it be neat if the velocity changed as a function of position as the square root of a squared minus x squared? Let's see if we can make that happen. So uh, let's see, I'm looking over here at my notes because of course I'm prepared with notes, uh, but I don't want you to see them until I write them down. So let's say some things we know about speed. Let's say rate times time equals distance. Everybody agree on that? We all learned that one in junior high or, or even earlier. And so uh, I could say how far the ball goes around the circle, V naught, that's the speed that the ball goes. And for T, I'm gonna say the period. The period T is the time it takes for a full cycle, right? So if I plug in the speed of the ball going in a circle times the period, how far have I gone? I've gone two pi times the radius. Yes, two pi r, but I'm not gonna write r. What is this radius? I'm gonna call this a, the amplitude, because this shadow is gonna go to the right, and then the shadow is going to go to the left. The shadow goes back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. The amplitude, but that's also the radius. So I've said VT equals distance. The circumference of the circle is 2 pi r. And the radius of the circle is A, the amplitude. Okay, so I can solve that for V naught, the speed of the ball. Not necessarily the speed of the shadow, but the speed of the ball. And that gives me 2 pi a over t. Yes, uh, 2 pi a over t. And 2 pi over t, um, I want to look at, uh, th 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 I'm changing this. Two pi. There we go. Um, I want to get rid of t. What could I write instead of one over t? That's where I'm going. I could write two pi f a. Two pi a. Two pi a. I replaced one over t with frequency because period and frequency are reciprocals. So now I have this speed is 2 pi f a. Wait a minute, what's 2 pi f? Omega. Remember, we also said earlier that 2 pi f equals omega. If I go around once, that's one cycle, but one cycle corresponds to 2 pi radians. So the number of cycles times 2 pi is the number of radians. So I replaced 2 pi f with omega a or a omega. So v naught, this speed, I could call a omega. Hmm. OK, let's see where that leads us. Now, I want to talk about the velocity of this shadow. The shadow goes back and forth. So this velocity of the shadow. I'm going to call it velocity as a function of time. V naught is a constant. It's a speed that does not change. V of the shadow is not constant. The speed is zero. It speeds up and goes the fastest. It slows down and goes zero. Speeds up and goes fastest, slows down and goes zero. And so let's think about that. If we start here, on your mark, get set, go, 
the speed at the beginning is it's zero. And then it speeds up and goes fast backwards, slows down, stops, goes slowly forward, slows down and stops. So what I'm going to say is that to me sounds like a, um, a sign graph. Does that not sound like a sign graph to you? So uh, da, 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 da. let me just show you what I'm thinking here. Sign looks like this. So we start with the speed of zero. But this object starts with the speed of zero and then its speed is slow and negative. So it's sounding like actually a negative sign graph. Let's see if we get there. We're gonna get there, but not. So I'm going to say uh, the velocity of the shadow. The velocity of the shadow is a component of V naught. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna draw this V naught a little bigger. I'm gonna draw this whole picture bigger. There's a lot going on here. This is V naught and I'm looking at this shadow. I wanna know the velocity of the shadow. Now I've told you we're looking for sign, but here's how I'm gonna prove that to you. This is diagonal. It points up and left or left and up. So there is a left part of this velocity and an up part of this velocity. And this is the velocity I'm looking for, All right? This is the velocity of the shadow. It's the horizontal component of this velocity. So let's see, if this is my angle theta, this is 90, this is 90 minus theta. These two have to add up to 90. Do you see that these two angles add up to 90? So if this is 90 minus theta, this is theta. And let's see, if that is theta there, do you see that these two angles add up to 90? So this is 90 minus theta, which means this is theta. These two angles have to be the same. So if this is V naught and this is theta, this and therefore this, do you see that this side is opposite theta? So that makes this V naught sine theta. The opposite side is the whole thing times the sine of the angle. V naught sine theta. The velocity of the shadow is V naught sine theta. And because it points to the left, I'm gonna call it negative V naught sine theta. Negative V naught sine theta. That's the velocity of the shadow. Yeah, sine theta, square root of a squared minus x squared. I'm not done yet, but don't worry, we're almost done. Um, let's see, how can I make this graph or this equation look like this equation? Uh, let's see. Um, uh, I'm gonna write the velocity as a function of time is equal to negative V naught, oops, I don't need a parenthesis there, sine, I need parentheses here. Instead of theta, I can write omega t. Why is theta equal to omega t? Because rate times time equals distance translates uh, into rotational motion omega times t equals theta. As long as omega is constant, which it is, rate times time equals distance. So instead of theta, I can write omega t. And then v of t equals, now v naught, oh, v naught is a omega. So I can write negative 
a omega sine omega t. Yay, we're getting closer, are we? Now, sine, sine of omega t is sine theta. Let's go back to this big picture. The sine of this angle, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Sine theta equals opposite, that's a cursive O, not a theta, over hypotenuse. So the sine of omega t is the opposite over the hypotenuse. Well, the hypotenuse is A, the amplitude, right? So I'm gonna call this A, I'm gonna call this X, and then I'm interested in mm, this O. So I could say X squared plus O squared equals a squared, Pythagorean theorem. This side squared plus this side squared equals this side squared. And so instead of O, I can say O squared equals a squared minus x squared. And therefore O is the square root, oh my goodness gracious, of a squared minus x squared. So instead of O, I can write the square root of a squared minus x squared. So sine theta is this. On my other piece of paper, I have sine theta. And instead of sine theta or sine omega t, I'm going to write this. So instead of sine omega t, which is sine theta, v of t equals negative a omega. Instead of sine theta, I'm going to write the square root of a squared minus x squared all over a. The square root right there square root of a squared minus x squared all over a. Hey, look, the a's cancel. And now I have v. We're no longer a function of t. Now we're a function of x. And I get negative omega square root a squared minus x squared. In other words, as an object goes around in a circle at constant speed, its horizontal projection or the shadow underneath it moves back and forth such that the velocity as a function of position is a constant times this square root of a squared minus x squared. But wait a minute, a harmonic oscillator, a simple harmonic oscillator has a velocity as a function of position that's a constant times this same square root, square root a squared minus x squared. In fact, I even see that this constant omega is root k over m, which is another formula that I showed you, but I didn't prove until right now in this chapter. So I hope your mind is blown. But on this little piece of paper, in purple on the left, I've described velocity as a function of position for a simple harmonic oscillator. And on this side, in green on the right, I've described the shadow or the horizontal projection of uniform circular motion. And both of those velocity equations are some constant times the square root of a squared minus x squared. In other words, they have the same velocity function. And therefore, they're the same motion. Ta-da! Well, I hope that was fun for you. Obviously, it was fun for me. I also hope that you have an excellent day. And remember, don't break the laws of physics.